Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome back to a professional match of StarCraft 2. Today it's time for a best of five series of top level Terran versus Zerg, where in game number one we find ourselves on the map a light shade. So spotting here in the top left hand corner, playing with the blue SCVs, we have Hero Marine. His opponent in the opposite corner, the current world champion of StarCraft 2. Of course that means we have none other than Raynor. Alrighty, so this is the grand finals of the ESL Open Cup number 74 Europe. Now, I was joking about this a little bit over the last couple of weeks because it used to be called the Big Gape Weekly. Hero Marine, also known as Big Gape, uh, was winning pretty much every single one of these. So, I had a quick little look. Assuming this game, by the way, starts off normally. It looks like everything is going to be okay. Is he going to go Command Center first? Cheeky, cheeky. Alright, so we have Hatch first and Command Center first. So, assuming we have a little bit of time here. I think I can uh, discuss the results of the most recent ones, because I, I was curious myself. So this is number 74, the Grand Finals, right? So number 73 was won by Hero Marine, 72 was won by Hero Marine. However, <laughs> 71 was won by Clem, 70 was won by Showtime, 69 was won by Clem, 68 Clem, 67 Clem, 66 Clem, 65 Clem, 64 Clem, 63 Hearthstone, 62 Clem, 61 Clem, and 60 Clem. I, I don't really want to go any further back. Basically what I'm trying to say, um, is that even though this was called, you know, the Hero Marine Weekly, or the Big Game Weekly, ever since these other top-level players have started signing up, <sighs> it's been a little bit tough for him. I mean, he's won 73 and 72, so he still certainly has it, but, uh, yeah, it must be kind of frustrating, right? If you're almost guaranteed of, like, an extra 200 bucks or so every week, then all of a sudden these other top dogs start showing up as well. Now, two names that are very notably absent from those, uh, those winners that I just mentioned are obviously Saro and Raynor. For some reason, these two don't really participate in the events too often. I'm not entirely sure as to why. I mean, Saro doesn't really participate in anything that has a small prize pool, it seems. <laughs> He's like, ah, if I can't win at least 10 grand, I'm not gonna bother. Uh, but no, like, for some reason, they, they don't really show up too often. I guess uh, it's just a preference type of thing. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe they also... Uh, Maybe this is maybe a little bit me thinking about it too, too much, but maybe they also want to, you know, give other players a chance to uh, participate in the space. Although, I don't really know exactly if that is something that goes through our mind. But anyways, um, there's no denying that Hero Marine has been struggling a little bit more recently as far as winning these particular tournaments go. I still feel, by the way, like Hero Marine is not really a player that people rate nearly as highly as he deserves to be rated. I mean, Hero Marine has been around since the early days of StarCraft 2, absolute top-tier contender. I would say as far as, like, the top five goes of non-Korean pro gamers at this point, it's probably, you know, Clem, say, uh, uh, Clem, Serral, Raynor, right? They're kind of, like, in a, in a little league of their own. Um, then you have guys like Hero Marine and, and Showtime, and there's a couple of other players as well, but there's no denying Hero Marine is really, really good. And I guess the, the downside of being an old-school pro gamer is that a lot of people just kind of like, you know, take you for granted, I suppose. But there's no denying that Hero Marine is really one of the very best. Either way, let us see exactly what goes down here. We have an Overlord Speed opener here from Raynor. Now, Raynor, he's known to do this from time to time. I always feel like Raynor does this primarily when he feels like he's better than his opponent. And once again, maybe this is me looking into it a little bit too much. But, um... There's no denying that this is a big gamble, because obviously Zerking speed is going to be late, and this is not a particularly cheap upgrade, but the nice advantage is that obviously you can scout everything that your opponent is doing um, with detail, right? So he knows right now it's a quick third CC, he knows that it's a 1-1-1 one, one, one opener. Hero Marine actually goes for the Raven first, out of that Stargate, or Starport rather, which I'm uh, personally a big fan of. I love seeing the Raven first. And I guess it makes sense as well, especially if you... If you go up against someone with Overlord speed, I mean, okay, he starts up the Cloaking Field upgrade here in the tech lab. Radar must know that that is fake. There's no way that there's gonna be a Benshee here as a follow-up. It just does not, nah, it does not make any sense. But I guess Hero Marine may as well reserve a couple of minerals here and there just to try and uh, fake it out to his opponent for just a sec. Okay, he's gonna check with the other Overlord as well. He will see though that a Raven will pop out. Uh, he's waiting. Yep, there it is. So he sees exactly what's going on. Apparently one drone there got roasted on the other side of the map as well. So there's a couple reasons as to why I like this Overlord speed early, right? First off, it's great because you can scout out exactly what's going on, right? So if you know exactly how you need to respond to all of the different openers that Terran players have, it's fantastic. However, there's a couple of reasons why I am not personally a big fan of playing it myself. First off, I mean, link speed is going to be very late. Uh, 
Maybe hold that thought. No, he's just using right there the detection of that Raven. Um, so first off, link speed is going to be very late. So the first couple of Hellions can actually get some work done if Terran realizes exactly what's going on. But secondly, as soon as Terran sees that there is an Overlord speed first, they know for a fact that there's pretty much no chance that it will be any kind of real early game aggression from the Zerg player, right? So if you want to go for a Roach push, for example, you don't go for the Overlord speed upgrade because that could have been an extra Ravager, right? So usually it kind of gives like the, the signal to a Terran player that it's A-OK -okay to do whatever they like. And um, yeah, I don't know. Like you, you help yourself out, but you also help your opponent out quite a bit, if that makes any sense. Anyways, let's find out exactly what the follow-up is going to be, so... Siege tank here on the high ground, probably dealing a little bit of friendly fire as well with that splash damage. It's gonna be just a standard follow-up right now, though, from Hero Marine. Opting to go for his additional barracks right now, so... Barracks 4 and 5 are coming up. He's also going for that 1-1 one, one upgrade. The second uh, NG Bay a little bit later here. He's already creating, like, a semi-second wall over here. So if Zerklings decide to get adventurous, at the very least, they're not gonna be able to get too much damage done. In the meantime, on the side of the Zerk, we see a 1-1 one, one opener here as well from Raynor. So, the late lair. Bailing Nest is therefore not going to have bailing speed anytime soon yet. That could be a problem, actually, against the push, yeah. So, Stimpak is done. Combat Shield is, well, I would say about a third of the way or so finished here for the Terran player. But, this is actually kind of tricky to deal with without bailing speed, right? So, the Creep Spread is looking nice. He also got rid of the Rocks. Which definitely makes it easier to set up surrounds, but breaking this sort of position is not easy. This Siege Tank, though? Ooh, very vulnerable. This is obviously the thing that Raynor used to do a lot, right? This is how he made a name for himself a couple of years ago. Back then, we used to critique his late game quite a bit. These days, he's really good at that as well, but... He was phenomenal in the mid game. Really good at this... Yeah, non-stop aggression. So right now, even though he knows his opponent is probably gonna go for a push over here... He's still setting up different kinds of attacks. So once again, look, it's a slow push right here from the Terran player, and Raynor's like, nah. <laughs> I'll just run in. Yeah, he wanted to start up a 4th CC. That's not going to happen. Is there really something that here that Hero Marine can do at the same time? I don't think so. At the same time, Banelings are loaded into the Overlord. 1-1 one, one here is done for the Zerkling, so they deal a tremendous amount of damage. Queen's also trying to get some, some work in. Okay, this will be cleaned up now. What about these Banelings? What about these Banelings? Hello? Okay. <laughs> I thought for a second he wasn't going to drop him. Oh my god, okay. So there it is. Um, now this slow push, right? Needs to be cleaned up, obviously. Well, it helps, I guess, if you give a, uh, a couple queens away. But um, that's 18 SCVs going down the drain. And the downside of a slow push, right, is it's kind of got it in a name, right? It's slow. And right now, I mean, he's bought enough time with his Zerkling shenanigans to finish up some trifical hooks. I'm pretty sure... But Raynor is... Well, this is still a scary push, though. Yeah, that's still three siege tanks on the high ground. Once again, he comes in with the counter-attack, though. Kills all of the units there defending the third base. SCVs, once again, nowhere to run. They're gonna be... Oh, my God. This is... This is textbook Raynor. This is what he did for years. Well, years. He did it for, like, half a year, and everyone's like, What? You can do that against a slow push? Yeah, obviously you can. All right, well, this army, though, is still terrifying. 94 army supply right now for the Terran. Only 67 right now for the Zerg. A couple of Overlords also hanging above this base. Okay, this expansion will be killed. Nicely done right there by the German Terran player. Plus two, plus two. Definitely not going to finish here anytime soon. Once again, look at this. <laughs> he was thinking about it at the very least. Okay, he's probably instead going to pick up a couple of reinforcements here. Also very nice. Yeah, I think if you're just going to clean up this push right now, that should be more than enough. At the same time, while this fight is happening, a couple of Zerklings have somehow, some way, made their way into the base as well. Hero Marine taps out, and that was an extremely clean game number one. Okay, game number two takes place on Blackburn. Pretty good Terran map, though. It's gotten much better for Zerks over the course of the last couple of months. Especially when his map was first introduced, there were some killer timing attacks that Zerg players didn't really know how to deal with, so they would veto this map all the time. Uh, but I'm assuming in a best of five series, Raynor probably vetoed Beckett Industries instead, because that map is, uh, is quite tough. And a lot of Zerg players recently have been playing Roach Ravager here, so... Yeah, we'll see what ends up going down right here on Blackburn. So what exactly went wrong there for Hero Marine in the previous game? Well... It was the classic, I'm gonna attack you in 17 different places at once, and if you fail one of them, you lose kind of attacks, right, from Raynor. I mean, maybe not 17, but that 
Yeah, that most important defense of the bailing drop instead of the main mineral line was not really spotted or not really respected. Maybe he thought it was going to be Zerklings because Reynard drops a lot of Zerklings as well. Either way, I think it was 18 SCVs ended up dying in the main base. And then that slow push for Terran, I mean, it's nice and all. But uh, it also becomes a bit of an all-in, right? I mean, yeah, you have that army supply advantage, but now you're going to have to fight on creep against a Zerk player that has 1-1 one, one done, so it's matching your upgrades. He's got 2-2 two, two coming, which you've spotted because you saw the little wiggle inside of the Evo Chamber, so you know you need to go. But then, uh, you know, you're fighting on creep against Banelings, and it, it's just it's just a bit of a disaster. Queen's obviously also super good on creep, so clean game right there by Raynor. Just, uh, yeah, trying to uh, force his opponent to take out multiple fires at once. So wait, this is a pool first build into a hatch into a hatch? Is that what we're seeing here? Huh. So, pool first builds in general are kind of uncommon these days. Whenever we see them though, I think that most Terran players will look at this and think, okay, <laughs> it's a pool first, must be some sort of roach push, right? Doesn't have to be the case. I mean, I hope for Terran's sake right now that he's gonna scout the main, yeah. He needs to check if there's any gases taken. If there are gases taken. Ooh, ooh, he doesn't get the spot. Okay. So that's actually a big deal. He doesn't want to lose the SCV right there and he doesn't see the gases. Is he going to check the third? He needs to. Uh, maybe he's going to check with the Reaper here in a little bit instead. Anyways, um, I think most Terran players, whenever they go up against pool first, they'll assume that it's going to be some sort of Roach push, especially on Blackburn. So this is... Uh, yeah, a little bit annoying right now for Hero Marine. He needs to go check the third. Then he can figure out what's actually going on here. Because right now it could be like a nine roach push or something happening. And that would be a bit of a disaster. Okay, he sees drones over here. So I guess that's going to give him a little bit of intel. And now he's moving on over to the third and he realizes what's up. So, this is a pool hatch hatch opener right here from Raynor. Which is not something that I've really seen. Not in a long time anyway. Means that his gas is going to be very late. So maybe that's something that the Terran player can capitalize on. I like what Terran is doing here though. Going just for the classical 1-1-1. Would not mind seeing the switcheroo right there on the, uh, the tech lab with the starport here in a little bit. And obviously start pumping out those Hellions two at a time. Maybe this is a build that Raynor has got prepared specifically for this map. Who knows? I mean, I, I remember casting Raynor versus, uh, I think it was Gang Fu Banda a little while ago. And Raynor was just playing builds that didn't really make a whole lot of sense. He was just kind of memeing a lot. I sent him a message uh, later, actually, because uh, he, he brought up at some point during Stay at Home Story Cup that I only ever casted games of his that he would lose. I'm like, is that even true? I don't even know. Anyways, um, spoiler alert, I guess, for that particular series. It was, uh, it was a little bit one-sided, but he mentioned, yeah, I don't know why I keep memeing on Gong Fu. Poor Gong Fu. <laughs> I was like, okay, that's... Yeah, fair enough. So maybe he just kind of, you know, plays on the fly sometimes. Either way, one gas taken right now in the Natro expansion. Third CC starts up, four-ish minutes into the game. Pretty early there, all things considered. So, oh, he's made a Cyclone right now and he's loaded it into uh, an Overlord. Apparently, oh, he doesn't drop it. That's beautiful, actually. I like that. So he's individually dropping the Marines, not showing the Cyclone there, which is actually really cool. This means that he's got a lot more potential that he can deal with this, uh, with, that he can do rather with this army. Killing another Overlord would not be bad. Yeah, is this just the Overlord killing hit squad? Is this the, the level of damage we are accepting right now as Terran players? Sorry, Jimmy. I guess this is what Terran players are, are happy with these days. Careful, though, with that medevac, my man. Yeah, fair enough. So link speed is uh, only just now halfway done. We're five minutes into the game. It's very late. All right. So it's going to be an armory right now. How many Hellions are we on? He's still producing them. So this is a bit of a wild opener as well for Terran though. I was highlighting here what Raynor was doing. But this is a couple Marines inside of a Medivac with a Cyclone. Now Hellions is a follow-up together with a Raven. So this is going to be a Hellbat push for sure. I mean, it has to, right? But he's going there in a... Relatively inefficient way, but I think it's still gonna Yeah, be able to catch this Zerk player off guard. Roach Warren does come up, but it's pretty late. Zerking speed only just now finishes. Okay, line them up. Yeah, if you line up the Zerklings like that, the Lings are dead. Even starts up a couple more drones though. Okay. 
Very confident, apparently, that he can just hold this with the Queens. Well, there's the Hellbent transition. Medivac goes down, which is unfortunate. Yeah, a lot of energy here on these Queens. Good split so far. Auto turret also goes down. Not the most ideal position, I don't think. Raven is going to be zoned out right there by that Sport Crawler. Yeah, now Roaches will be popping out. Nice dancing here by Raynor, though, dude. Okay, he tries to get the Raven. Good control there by Hero Marine as well. Now, Hellbats of EC are not really units you necessarily want to keep in the game for too long. So, yeah, just maximizing damage with them is not bad. Is killing Queens alone, though, going to be enough to justify it? So there's only three Queens remaining out of, I think, the original nine or so. All right. Hmm. Was that a good move right there for Gabe? Um... I think it was fine. If you look right now at resources lost, you can see that that was mineral-wise in favor of the Terran player. Wait, he didn't lose the Raven, right? No, 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 he didn't. Um, but, yeah, now Zerk has a gold base, and even though Raynor uh, didn't really have, like, a super solid counter to that particular push, the push was also kind of late because of that Marine Cyclone shenanigans earlier, and I guess Raynor had enough energy there on the Queens to just defend that, you know, fine. Zerklings, once again, I mean, there's a, an open door over here. They're ready to run in if they have the chance. A couple of Hellbats over here in the back trying to be a nuisance. <laughs> so you can attack the Mineral Line here on Blackburn uh, from the back, obviously. It is going to be a Roach player, by the way. So Roaches with plus one missile. No, hmm, no armor upgrade, interestingly enough. Fourth command center starts up here as well for Hero Marine. Yeah, both players are constantly trying to outsmart uh, outsmart the opponent, right? It's almost as if they're playing a strategy game. Can you believe it? It's taken a decade, but we're here. Now, the disadvantage here of going for... Can you go after the Evo? I think going after the Evo might not be a bad idea. The disadvantage of going for Roach Ravager, uh, Ravager is that your, uh, your army is kind of slow. That being said, right now, Hero Marine does have a lot of units over on the other side of the map inside of the main base of the opponent. A couple of siege tanks get killed right away. Raynor does the same thing in this game that he did with Zerklings in the previous one. But yeah, you know what? You're gonna send units to my side of the map. I can deal with those. Or I'll, I'll halt your uh, your progression over there. It means that you're not gonna have that much army at home if you're committing it to my side of the map. And he absolutely overwhelms this base. Hmm. All right. Are you gonna? No. No, 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 no. I don't think you can go up that ramp. Okay. Nah. That Raven still is super useful over here, using the anti-armor missile that allow those marines or allows those marines and marauders to deal significant more, uh, significantly more damage. Stimpak once again utilized though. He wants to fight here because obviously those Metavex don't have infinite amounts of energy to keep on uh, healing those units. The problem is, right? Raynor is more than happy to trade army here. Steren is now, I mean, uh, basically mining two bases mostly. He's going to transfer a couple of SCVs towards that third base again. But obviously we have the gold mining for quite some time here already for Raynor. Who's just playing Ling Bane Road Ravager this series, I guess? Just basic units. Okay, here comes the swarm again from multiple different angles. Corrosive Biles will connect with all of the siege tanks. Is there enough though for the Terran player to break through this? Is this 1-1 one, one Terran going up against plus one Zerg? A lot of armies fly though for that Terran player is caught up in Metavex as well. A couple of the Metavex now even get biled down and that's not really what you're looking for at all. SCVs pulled away from the mineral line too. And these fights man, like even though it looks like the Terran player here is cleaning up, this is still not what you're looking for, because once more, Zerk is mining way more than the Terran player is at this point. So yeah, that fight was resource-wise efficient for the Terran player, but he lost even more SCVs. And we're slowly getting to the point again where Terran is going to be forced into an, uh, an all-in, right? Man, every single one of these Terran units right now has a private plane up ahead. Are you seeing this? <laughs> There's like six marines and two marauders. Okay, three marauders and about nine medivex, right? Like, <laughs> they all have their private plane. This is the aristocracy of the of the Terran Dominion. 
Siege tank once again will be killed. Rainer's just flooding units towards the other side of the map, knowing that those Metavex are going to run out of energy, and they have. So those Terran units right now, every single time they stim, it's going to get worse and worse. 15 more SCVs end up going down. I think from here on out, it's just rinse and repeat, right? What Terra's looking for right now is to smash back this army and then capitalize on it by loading up into Medifex and going to the other side of the map. But the problem is, I don't think that Raynor is really going to allow that. Third base is completely vulnerable, but at this point, Raynor wants to apparently go for the neck. He wants to cut his life into pieces. This is his last resort. Suffocate. No, okay, not suffocation. Okay, well. There we do finally have a couple of the reinforcements going into the mineral line too. GG is cold and, well, Raynor so far seems to be on point. Alright, game number three takes place on 2000 atmospheres and this is already match point right here for a Raynor. That was quick. Hmm. Let's see what they end up going for here on this particular map. I kind of would like to see Raynor going for the same build once again. So the pool at 16, I think, is what it was, and then hatch hatch is a follow-up. I'm trying to think, like, why that... Maybe it's because on Blackburn... Okay, so here's the problem. If you go for a delayed Zerkling speed, you usually can run into a bunch of problems against Hellions, right? So if you delay your Zerkling speed for a long time, and you don't have it done by, like, the fourth uh, Hellion being out of the factory, you can just simply have a couple of Hellions instead of your mineral line and, and you know, lose a, a dozen workers or so. I guess on Blackburn, you only really have that one central path through the center of the map that you have to concern yourself with. Because the alternative for Terran is to go all the way through the center up north, right? And then around the gold base and then eventually towards the third. I guess that cycling of the Hellions is just a little bit too slow. Meaning that Terrans are likely only going to ever hang, hang out on like the, the main street, right? They're probably only going to hang out in that area. So as long as your queens are protecting that, it's fine, maybe? Anyways, I don't really think you can do something like that on this map, though, because, say, for example, Zerk takes this as their third, right? Hellions can go over there, they can go over there, they can go over there, and without link speed, like, those Hellion pokes can become a bit of a disaster. Yeah, so, just a centered hatch gas pool right here from Raynor. Maybe that's the reason, I don't know. I'll keep it in mind if we uh, see another ZVT on Blackburn Alley. We'll see what, what that Zerk player decides to go for. Maybe it's actually the, uh, maybe it's the Blackburn opener, I don't know. Either way, standard opener right here from Hero Marine, so we have the quick supply depot, of course, into the barracks, and now the command center on the low ground. No command center first this time around, I mean, that would be very cheeky. Maybe that's also actually one of the reasons, right? In the first game, we did see Hero Marine going for the CC first. So Raynor maybe looked at it and thought, huh, you know what, if you want to play CC first every game this series, I might just be able to catch you off guard with a couple of Zerklings in the earlier stages of the game. Like, just delaying this is an absolute disaster for Terran. Either way, Hellion, uh, or sorry, the Reaper right here gets across the map. Hellion's probably, oh, that's very ambitious. Yeah, <laughs> okay, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the thought was over there. He loses a drone. A little bit sloppy. Oh, he did leave the drones in gas. So this could be a Roach push. Could be Overlord speed as well. Eh, he's pulling out right now. Okay, leaving one, nope, nope, leaving no drones in. So it is, okay, yeah, it is going to be Overlord Speed. So, hmm, once again, a different approach. In game number one, we saw him going Overlord Speed before Link Speed, and now we see Link Speed before Overlord Speed. Interesting. Darren's gone for the quick third CC. We do see the Starport right over here as well, so Hellions are going to be coming up too, but... This will all be scouted very shortly once that Overlord Speed is done. It's important, though, to keep all of those units alive, right? So this one has got one drone kill, which is actually quite good. Just slowing down the creep spread and getting a worker kill is, uh, yeah, pretty much the best you can hope for right here with the Reaper. Keeping it alive is nice, though. Anyways, Nematized Carapace finishes up, and he's going to be able to find out right about right now that it is going to be a third CC opener. Although, Raynor probably already knew. So here's a fun fact, okay? If you're a, uh, a Zerk player out there, if you... Don't see a supply depot at the front wall off by the four minute mark. 
It pretty much always means that Terran decided to go for a 3rd CC opener, even if you haven't seen the 3rd CC. And the reason for that is that Terran would otherwise hit a supply block. So obviously if you go for... Um, where's this guy going? Obviously if you go for the 3rd uh, the command center, you get a bunch of supply out of that one as well. What are you doing? Oh! Proxy Armory? <laughs> what? <laughs> Proxy Armory! Yeah, just a classical Terran build. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? I guess this kind of makes sense. In game one, Raynor, after... Well, he hasn't decided yet what to go for. After... Okay, he goes Lair. That's not what Hero Marine is looking for. So, after scouting everything, he decided to go double Evo Chamber first. Um, in this case, it's going to be the Cloaking Field upgrade as well for Banshees. So, I think that's also the reason why Raynor actually decided to go for the... Uh, the lair here. Ooh. Oh no, oh god, loses two Hellions for free. Oh, sh okay, that's really bad. So Hero Marine, okay, here's what Hero Marine is doing, right? He wants to go for the one-two punch with a quick third command center. So the one-two punch being the Benchies with the cloaking upgrade, as well as Hellions that turned themselves into Hellbets, right? Now, losing two Hellions over there is a disaster because this is a very big commitment here for the Terran player. He's basically trying to be a little bit cheeky. He's trying to get a little bit of work done with this, uh, this armory over here, but it's... <laughs> it's only going to be strong if you actually have all of your units there, right? So is he still going to go for it? I guess so. Two Banshees are going across the map. Baneling Speed is uh, obviously nowhere to be seen. I mean, in this case, the Evo Chambers are going to be much later. But I think the most important thing here is having... Yeah, having Overseers. So he's got two Overseers coming. Super safe approach. Here's the Hellbets. Okay, a couple of Zerkings actually get a decent surround. So Raynor is just allowing them to finish. Transfusion Energy is available. Queens are split up, though. One queen ends up going down here so far. A lot more Zerklings are coming up here, too. Queens just trying to maximize the amount of damage they can do. The three queens from the, the third base. I guess they used to be four. Ooh, they're trying to target fire down whatever they can over here. Ooh, tries to go for the Evo Chamber block. Not quite happening. Three drones have ended up going down so far. <laughs> I think if this was two more Hellbats, this push would have been way more scary. Especially since Raynor hasn't seen the armory, so this caught him off guard, but... Yeah. Yeah, this is a great position right now for the Zerg player to be in. He can counterattack with the leftover units. And obviously he can drone up to his heart's content here going forward. Even uh, further now delaying bailing speed, prioritizing 1-1 one -one here instead. I guess Raynor's wondering where that, uh, that armory came from, but he hasn't seen it. Doesn't really matter all too much. Um... Oh, this is awkward. Hello. Benchies! Hey, come on! C come on! There you go. Couple of good drone kills here. This is nice. Yeah, this is what you need. Four worker kills here is way better than, like, no worker kills. <laughs> Especially because they were pretty much free, right? So, maybe that justifies it just a tad. Either way, follow-up right now from the Terran is going to be the Drilling Claws upgrade. I love this opener. I think it's very nice. So we have Banelings uh, in inside of an Overlord, and we have uh, Widow Mines inside of a Medivac. Both players trying to pull a very similar trick on each other. They're like, hey, <laughs> Raynor, pull my finger. <laughs> hey, Gabe, pull mine, you know? And then they both... <laughs> no, but it feels like a bit of a cheap trick, right? When they're both going for the same move. Oh. First Widow Mine drop actually has already arrived. I didn't even realize that one. Good defense here, though, by, uh, by Raynor. Where'd the Overlord go? Okay, so you know, you know what? Like, the harassment here is starting to look a little, bit be uh, a little bit better. Yeah, 14 worker kills here in total right now. That's not bad. Uh, the drop alert. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's been all army hot feet back. At the same time though, Widow Mines. Trying to get some work done. Getting a little bit of work done as well. Oh, you know what? This looked quite bad here for Gabe earlier. And now it's actually looking quite fine. Fourth Command Center is going to finish up as well. So this is not going to be like a three base all in that we see so very often. From Terran players as a follow up. Man, he's got a whole lot of spores. Is this the way you defend it? Ay ay ay. Personally, right? I've been struggling a little bit against uh, these Widow Mine drops. As a Zerg player on the ladder at the very least, it's a very tough follow-up. 
Especially if Terrans open up very aggressively and they uh, they are pushing through the main path of the map and then the bench just go in in one area and then like one widow mine drop comes in. It's a bit of a disaster. Anyway, speaking of disasters, eleven SCVs end up going down as well. But yeah, he's just adding on a ton of spore crawlers at the front now. Beautiful split right there by Gabe. Nicely done. Fourth uh, hatchery, or sorry, fifth hatchery is never gonna finish. Was that a wheel? I just saw a wheel floating across my screen. Okay, so fourth command center is getting into position. Couple missed rallies right there on SCVs for some reason, I'm not sure. But uh, fourth CC, for some reason, was also floating forward. Should be morphed into a planetary fortress here very, uh, very soon. With a mine drop once again coming up. With a mine's on the high ground, actually, I kind of like it. Yep. Oh, no! What? Really? Alright. I thought that that was going to be able to kill a lot more than, than it did. I mean, it still killed a whole lot of links, so I guess it was fine, but... It was almost ready to uh, hit the units at the front. Now, this is also a good pickup right there by Hero Marine. Not a flawless game, but he's definitely more on point here. Yeah. Got himself that, uh, that nice bit of aggression done. Problem is, though... Lurker Den is going to be the name of the game here in this particular game for Raynor. So, this is something that he popularized a while ago. Where you basically play Link Bane and you only make Hydras, not really the Hydra upgrades, but you just make them to, uh, to morph into Lurkers. And it's kind of like, ugh, this tempo-based play here from Gabe. It's... Oof, man, just the Link Bane is enough in this case, I think. But this, this very tempo-based play here from the Terran player is very hard to stop if it's done perfectly. So, going for lurkers and then morphing those into, or sorry, like putting those into like good positions makes it very difficult for the Zerg player, or for the Terran player to continue pushing. Now this is nice. This is what he was looking for a little while already. There you go. One Widow Mine over at the natural expansion too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it seemed nice to me, but then it's only six worker kills at the expense of all Widow Mines. I guess the Medivac uh, barely lives. One health. Yeah, so so basically, uh, Terrans, when they go for these kind of parade pushes, they really rely on the tempo of these units, right? To, to carry them through the game. But Lurkers, burrowed in good positions, make it very difficult to continue those pushes. Because you just can't. Well, maybe this base can be cleaned up. Seismic Spines upgrade just finished up here for the Terran or for the Zerg player, so those Lurkers now have plus two range. Obviously, they still get heavily outranged by Siege tanks, but really good. Viper now comes up as well. In the meantime, second armory is being produced. Because <laughs> he doesn't want to start upgrading on the one that's over. Oh, no, he does. I was going to say, maybe he doesn't want to upgrade over there. Liberator's up in the air too, though, which is really nice. How exactly is Hero Marine going to defend against these Zerglings, though? Well, I guess... Just lifting up, getting on out of there. Can he move forward with these? He will. Yeah, it's a, a bit of a slow push. We've seen, though, how Raynor deals with slow pushes in the first game. Ooh, there's an Overlord with two... Uh, okay. <laughs> an Overlord with two of those Lurkers in it. Lynx are setting themselves up right now for what seems to be a surround as well, but I don't know if that's a great idea. Well, he wants to try at the very least. These units have been spotted same time, Lurkers are going to be able to make their way into the main base. And this is quite annoying for the Zerg player, or for the Terran player rather, to have to deal with, because it's very difficult to actually clean these up. If you're in an, anno an annoying position, that is. This is one of those spots. A couple of Zerglings right there working on the 5th CC. It's one of those moves, I guess, that requires a lot of attention here from the Terran, right? So here Marine is forced to, uh... Yeah, spend a bunch of time on this. Rainer picks up, gets them out of there. Drops it back, I think, in the natural expansion over here instead. No detection over there. So it's gonna cost it out of scan. It's just obnoxious. Planetary, though, did finish up. Zerklings once again. Together with Banelings, trying to get some work done over at the third. The majority of the Terran big hitters, though, are sitting uh, on the edge of creep. I don't know if you necessarily want to have them over here. New base being acquired in the top left corner as well, and this is apparently the moment, yeah, with these units sitting on the creep for far too long that Zerk decides to engage. That is a very expensive set of units to miss. That was like, what, six siege tanks? Maybe, I don't know, but it was a bunch. Oh my god, this, oh god, the lurkers. 
They just killed an entire squad worth. And that's all because Raynor has been stressing the multitasking of his opponent, right? So this is super annoying. <laughs> stressing the multitasking right here of the uh, of the opponent. Right now the lurkers apparently are going to be moving forward as well. Uh, they could burrow to try and kill that base, but apparently it doesn't really matter because they've burrowed up here instead. Command center is already gone. Good abductions once again with those vipers. Raynor seems to be on point, man. Even though he did lose quite a lot here in the earlier stages of the game. These last couple of minutes have been all Raynor. Yeah, GG is cold, and there it is. Raynor wins the ESL Open Cup number 74 against Hero Marine with a 3-0 score. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, hit that like button down below. If you want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get notified as soon as future videos go live. Today, I want to give a special shout out to the Patreon supporters. Thank you very much for your generosity. But for now, thank you for watching. Have an awesome day. Don't forget to smile. And I'll see you once again in the next one.